Ever since I was a little kid, I have enjoyed taking things apart. It started with my toys. As I grew up a little bit, I was taking apart my Nintendo. And if you have been following this channel for any length of time, you know that did not go away as an adult. I have taken apart washing machines, treadmills, basically any type of machine that might have interesting components inside. I have disassembled it on this channel to show you guys some of the things that I can make with the parts inside. I'm telling you all this to help you understand how excited I was to visit a place where people get paid to take apart aircraft, to take apart military vehicles in order to reverse engineer it and see the parts inside. I'm talking about NIAR, a research facility in Wichita, Kansas. They let me tour the whole facility, see the aircraft being taken apart and explore the entire process. There's just one problem. There is a lot of high tech sensitive information that they do not want exposed on the internet. Understandable. So I wasn't able to record anything inside of this facility. The video that you're seeing now is actually pre-approved footage that they allowed me to share with you here. However, I did get some footage of the technology that they use in order to scan the aircraft and I'm going to share with you the process today and I thought it would be fun to compare what the pros do when they reverse engineer these aircraft with what I do in my backyard at the DIY level. So today I'm going to combine those two ideas and I think you'll find this very interesting. I do want to take a minute to say thank you to Dassault Systems for sponsoring this video today. They're the ones who made the connections, funded this trip, and gave me access into this amazing place. They also happen to be the makers of Catio, which is one of the software packages used at NIAR in the reverse engineering process. And I'll tell you more about that later in the video. So you might be wondering, why would a company, in this case the US military, hand over this sensitive information and have someone take it apart, reverse engineer it? Don't they have plans? Don't they have drawings? Don't they know what's inside their own airplane? And the answer is yes and no. These vehicles and aircraft, and there were tanks there, they had helicopters there, they even had a B-1 bomber that was really incredible to see. These vehicles and aircraft were designed in the 1980s. We're talking about 40 years ago now, and this aircraft was designed before there was a, a 3D model. Everything was hand-drawn, and these aircraft are extremely complicated. So we're talking about hundreds of pages of drawings, references to multiple drawings. If you take something like that and hand that to a modern day machinist, they're gonna charge you an astronomical price. And that's actually the problem we're trying to solve. We need to keep these birds in the air, just like people in many ways, <laughs> parts are wearing out and sometimes you need replacement parts. So in order to make those replacement parts, we're gonna to need to be able to take a 3D model and hand that to a machine shop because these parts aren't being mass produced anymore. This should also greatly accelerate the maintenance and repair of these airplanes as well. I don't mean just replacing parts that are failing but still are in place. I'm talking about missing parts. I'm talking about parts requiring maintenance that need to be found. Imagine if your uh, military aircraft is flying over a hostile territory and they put a big old hole in it because they don't want you flying over their <laughs> territory reasonable response. You managed to get this bird home, but it's got a big massive hole in the wing. Well, what parts were there? Well, you used to have to dig through hundreds of pages of drawings, but now you can just drag and drop in Katia, select all the components that were in that space, and now you've immediately got a list. This is everything that was potentially damaged or destroyed uh, in the last mission. You might be thinking, well, if the plane's old, why don't we just make new ones? but that's an even more expensive project. It takes many, many years to get an aircraft through the whole safety review process. It's extremely expensive to redesign an aircraft when this plane already flies and does almost everything we want. So we can gut the old electronics, put in the new hardware until this plane is not able to lift off the ground anymore, and let's keep these birds alive as long as possible. That's the goal. In fact, the whole project is called the Digital Twin Project because the end result is that we'll have a perfect 3D model that's representative of what the aircraft looks like today. So they'll start by bringing the aircraft in, cleaning it off, and getting it prepared for the first preliminary scan. A problem I didn't consider when I walked in was the aircraft will actually move up and down during the day sitting on its tires because the temperature in the room is going up during the hottest part of the day and you know cooling off later in the day, which is just ever so slightly changing the tire pressure and lifting the plane uh, or lowering the plane. 
and that'll show up on your scan. That's the level of accuracy that we're talking about here. So they will lift the aircraft up on jacks and begin the whole scanning process. This scanning process happens at each stage of the disassembly. So they will take off like the outer skin and do a scan. And then as each component comes off, not only do the individual components get scanned, but the whole plane gets scanned at each stage of disassembly. Each of these scans is really important because the scan itself is not the 3D model. It's more like a picture, a three-dimensional picture that they use for reference. They actually take the original drawings and they import the scan into CATIA, which is where they do all their 3D modeling. And comparing the drawings with the scan, they can actually create the 3D model with the scan data there for reference. You don't want to model directly from the scan data for quite a few reasons. The major one being many of these aircraft have had double of plates and all types of things added on, things that were modified during the manufacturing process. The beauty of having the three-dimensional scan though, is it makes it a million times easier to read these drawings that again are hundreds of pages long. And if you can imagine trying to understand a two-dimensional drawing in three-dimensional space with curves going in all different planes, it's extremely difficult. And so if you have a scan, that's showing you the curvature of the wings, the curvature of the inside of the airplane. It's much easier to look at the drawing and go, okay, yes, I am I'm understanding the drawing correctly. This is supposed to be going in this direction. So those two pieces of data together actually speed up the process quite a bit. This is actually very close to what I do, which is I take pictures, I'm not a three-dimensional scan. I take pictures all the way around whatever the thing is that I'm taking apart to make sure I have a really good visual reference that I can go back to. I always take pictures of circuit boards or anything that I might be unplugging something especially so that I can remember there was a yellow and a green wire that was plugged in there and this is what the plug looked like and so on. So that's really useful during the disassembly process to have pictures showing you all the different stages and what was connected to what. Once you've removed the outer skin and you start to get down to the individual components, there's a lot more work to do. Here you're gonna find gaskets, you're gonna find uh, grease, there's insulation, uh, parts are welded together that used to be individual components. All of this stuff needs to be cleaned off. Any sort of adhesive needs to be cleaned off, wells need to be grounded down so that you can scan the bare metal. And again, these scans will be brought into CATIA and these parts will be compared with what they can find inside of the drawing. The drawings will help you get it exactly to the original, but the scan will help you get very close to make sure that you've got that mental check there, your picture is correct. This is the most meticulous part and this is why it still takes a couple years from the time they drag this airplane inside until the time that they've got it completely disassembled and all the parts scanned. And then of course, all of the 3D models have to be created and they've got a whole team of people who are uh, taking these individual point cloud scans, uh, bringing them into the master model and then assembling the entire thing inside of CATIA. This is also very similar to something I do when I take things apart at home because I often reuse the motors, the bearings, uh, any sort of component that I think might be useful, I will create 3D models. I use my calipers, I usually put the calipers inside the picture so that I have a scale reference and then I'll import that into SOLIDWORKS in my case so that I can scale the whole picture and then I model on top of it. This is how I create models of the various motors that you see me using in projects, the various components that I might take from one thing and use in something else. And when I say make things, I'm talking about almost anything you can imagine. I have designed and built <laughs> with parts I took out of other machines. I've built my own power tools. I've built various clocks uh, from components that I salvaged from other machines. So you name it, I've probably done it. I'll put a whole list of videos in the description for you. There are at least seven or eight videos and each one of those videos will tell you about seven or eight projects that I've done using salvaged parts. If you can't tell yet, I really enjoy taking things apart and making new things with them. So my channel is full of that kind of content. I'll put links in the description for you. Now I mentioned this before, but it's worth mentioning again that because there are thousands of individual components, many duplicates of many parts, thousands of rivets alone that each need to be hammered out and removed, this process is very slow and it takes a long time. Now that they have their 3D model, they can not only 
more easily get replacement parts manufactured. They can also more easily create new parts that can go into the interior of these planes. Again, to keep these birds modern enough and capable enough to fly in the air today. This whole process really is just fascinating to me because it takes a lot of patience. It's a very meticulous, slow process, and uh, it's fascinating to see the result though. There's one more thing I wanna say. If you have a little kid who was like me when I was little and they wanna take everything apart, let them take it apart. In fact, when things break in your house, just throw it in a box and hand it to them. Let them go to town. They're not gonna know what they're doing at first. They might cut their finger or something, but they're not gonna die things will be just fine. And in the future, it might turn that little person into an engineer. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. This is <laughs> by far one of my favorite subjects. And uh, I was just, I was so excited. This is a, a great trip. I will leave all those links that we discussed in the description. You can go check that out there. I also wanna say thank you to my patrons, these fine people you see scrolling on the screen. It's because of you that I'm able to make this kind of content. And uh, for that, I'm very grateful. So thank you for watching.